February 20, 1943, north of Kasserine Pass, Tunisia. Dawn breaks over the barren hills, lighting a field of dust and wreckage. The roar of engines echoes between ridgelines as American Sherman tanks move in perfect rhythm through the chaos. Five tanks, separated by smoke, sand, and terrain, turn and strike as one. No flags, no flares, no messengers racing between them. To the German tank commanders watching through their periscopes, it looks like instinct or sorcery. But it is neither. It is communication. What the Germans could not see was the invisible web connecting every Sherman tank on that battlefield. A network of crystal-controlled frequency modulation radios born not in a war room, but in an American factory. While Panzer IVs fought through static-choked receivers, their 10-watt Fuji 5 radio struggling to reach even a kilometer, the Shermans spoke clearly across miles. Every tank was both transmitter and receiver. A complete node in the world, S first battlefield network. German tanks fought alone. American tanks fought together. It began with engineers Daniel Noble and Henrik Magnuski at Galvin Manufacturing, later called Motorola, who turned Edwin Armstrong SFM breakthroughs into rugged battlefield tools. Their SCR 508 weighed 181 pounds, delivered 25 watts of power, and ignored the chaos of the battlefield. Even through artillery barrages and engine noise, Voices came through sharp and clean. By Normandy, every American tank carried one. The Germans still struggled to equip even a fifth of theirs. The irony was cruel. Germany had invented modern armored warfare, but America had perfected its communication. In the end, victory didn't come from thicker armor or bigger guns. It came from invisible waves, carrying orders, warnings, and trust between crews who never felt alone. The Panzers had strength, the Shermans had connection, and in modern war, connection wins.